Hey, everybody, thanks for joining me in my very first uh, installment of my Ethel Merman Playbill project. If anybody needs uh, an actual primer on Ethel Merman, let me know and I'll record one and try to get that. Uh, but for now, let's just agree that she's the queen of the American musical theater. She still is. She always will be because this was a career that could never be even almost approximated. It spanned 1930 to 1970. Every one of her shows was a hit, over 6,000 performances on Broadway. We'll discuss hits. They change over the years. What a hit is why. Nothing came like Phantom and stayed for 30 years. They came and they went and they were hits. So here's my favorite picture, I think, of Ethel Merman. This is her in 1930 uh, in the with some of the ensemble of Girl Crazy. There she is, look at her little feet with the bows on her shoes. That's a black skirt cut up to there and a red blouse cut down to about there. And we know that because it was written about a lot. Uh, of the opening night of Girl Crazy it was like memorialized in every, I mean, if you are anybody who knows anything, you know about it. And now if you don't know about it, now you know about it. So everybody knows about it. Okay, I want to get right to the playbill. Now, this is a very uh, rare one in my experience. I've never seen another one, but here it is. The Alvin Theater Girl Crazy with a uh, artwork that is specific to the project. A cigarette ad on the back. I think we'll find that almost for the whole uh, 40 years. Lots of, uh, lots of advertisements in here. I sort of added them up so I didn't have to take you through page by page, but we have automobiles and tires, um, shoes, lots of shoe ads, perfumes, undergarments, bras, hose, garters, uh, anything with a two-way stretch that was invented in 1930. Uh, oh, the tragic bald-headed men in row whatever that uh, are too young to go bald. It's tragic is actually what it says. I'm not. We've got site-specific ads, Rogers Pete, Golf galoshes, oval teen. It's like you can come in and drive a girl crazy by buying stuff with your men. Yeah, okay, so let's go right in here. I'm gonna go right away to the title page, which is something we'll watch the evolution throughout this career. And keep it in mind, this is the Alvin Theater and it's run by, actually it's owned by, it was built by Alex Ahrens and Vinton Friedley, they were producing partners, and um, and they decided they should have their own theater. So look, they built one. I'll also read the fire notice, please. Look around now, choose the nearest exit to your seat in case of fire walk, not run to that exit. Do not try to beat your neighbor to the street. I, I think it's a very sensible, fair thing to say. Okay, this this was a weekly publication this particular edition is beginning Monday evening, April 13th of 1931. This is opened in October of 1930, and exactly a year from the great uh, stock market crash that takes us into de the Depression. So I want you to get a sense of like, this is hard times. We're going into very hard times. Uh, we're making a, a new musical comedy book by Guy Bolton and John McGowan. Music by George Gershwin, lyrics by Ira Gershwin, staged by Alexander Leftwich, dances and ensembles by George Hale, costumes by Kiviet, and settings by Donald Onslager. I think it's interesting because we don't really have a director yet, and we don't really have a choreographer yet. I mean, those titles, you know, obviously. Also, think about the money. Ginger Rogers is the star of this piece. Ginger Rogers is making $1,500 a week in the Depression. And Ethel Merman is brought on for $375. $1,500, $375. Okay, that's a big difference. But we are talking, uh, if you were lucky enough to have a job, you were probably making around $17 a week. A doctor was making $60 a week, something like that. Uh, oh, bird's eye. Clarence Birdseye, he, he patented, you know, he invented like freezing vegetables. So Birdseye, frozen vegetables, I want to hang on to that for a later show, just planting the seed now. We're going to move to the cast. Now I think this is interesting. Look down the cast, right? And then it's, it's the dots played by Alan Kearns, but then they don't, they don't go to the trouble of saying played by. They also don't 
take the thing all the way across. They just put those little dashes, the little things that indicate. Yeah, also, yeah, played by, played, play, 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 played, bye, 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 bye. Um, Red Nichols and his orchestra. This is a big deal because uh, they're loud. This is a, a brass heavy band. We have Glenn Miller, Gene Krupa, uh, um, the, the, uh, Tommy Dorsey, Jimmy Dorsey, um, uh, Jack Teagarden, as well as Red Nichols. And if a, if, if a bomb had gone off that, there would be no more jazz in America. Let's cut over here to the ladies of the ensemble. I counted them for you. There are 30 of them, 30. And there are 16 gentlemen of the ensemble. Can you stand it? Holy smokes, this thing got cut off. There are 30 of them. We're seeing like four times of the eight, nine, 10. Okay, there are many more. 20 more, my math skills still hold up. Great score. Oh yeah, Biden my time. Uh, could you use me? Embraceable you. Sam and Delilah is the first thing Ethel Merman sings on Broadway, followed about 12 minutes later by I Got Rhythm. Then, uh, but not for me, Boy What Love Has Done To Me, also Ethel Merman's song. And uh, did we get Biden My Time? Biden My Time, the very first one. Okay. Orchestral Arrangements by Russell Bennett. Hold on to that. Interesting. And Somer Pianos used in this production. I'm not familiar with Somer, but uh, okay. Cotton Club ads. There's there's a nice one. The Cab Calloway. Amazing. Okay. Um, is that it? Oh, well, the bio. <laughs> Why are we here? Here it is. She. This is not alphabetical. This is by your billing. So we have uh, one, two, three. Ethel Merman is fifth in this lineup. And the bio reads as follows. Ethel Merman, less than a year ago, was pounding a typewriter in an auto appliance plant in Long Island City. It was here, most likely, that she got rhythm. One night last year, she was given a chance to try her song talents in a nocturnal eatery in 57th Street. Thereafter, she found employment with Clayton Jackson and Durante at Les Ambassadors and at Miami Beach. Returning to New York last spring, Miss Merman met Al Siegel, and they formed an alliance for vaudeville. Their act put them in top demand, and after a swing around the country, they landed in Brooklyn, where they stayed for seven weeks. This appearance preceded their present engagement. Here's one of those site-specific ads. Uh, girl crazy, searching for an apartment will drive any girl crazy, but if she sees a Tishman apartment, she will see one to be crazy about. My fat shall go. Say that today, then do this. Yeah, you gotta get rid of that fat. Um, okay, is that it? Is that all I want to do? I'm trying to be time conscious, aware. People are busy. It's a new age. Um, so this is this is that. Oh, it doesn't say Playbill, does it? So I got worried. Is it actually Playbill, or was there something before Playbill? No. Playbill, this uh, this company, which was called the New York Theater Program Corps Publishers, became the Playbill at one point and then turned themselves into Playbill. So uh, it's all the same company. It is a history of Playbill. They were created in 1885, I think. And so we're going to watch them develop as we go. But this one, you can see just the title, the theater, and, uh, and a cigarette ad. Okay, so that's it. Very first one. I'll see you tomorrow for the very uh, George White Scandals of 1931. It's good. Okay. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow.